Well, Corey Ten Boone once said, never be afraid to trust an unknown future to a known God. A lesson Danette Crawford learned when her husband walked out on her and their newborn daughter. In trusting God for not only her future, but her day-to-day -day needs, Danette learns some significant truths about God and keys to his provision. And she shares them in this, her latest book, God, You've Got Mail. Today she hosts her own TV show called Joy in the Morning with Danette Crawford, available to over 165 million households worldwide. And she joins us now. Now, Danette, welcome, good to have you. Thank you, yeah. it's so good to be here. Now the, the title, uh, mm -hmm. It makes someone think right away, okay, there's a story behind that. Yeah, there is God, definitely. you've got mail. Yes. Basically, God was showing me and teaching me to really frame it. And you know, when we're in the middle of the circumstances that are so overwhelming, what we need to do is realize God's view of things. And he was saying, Danette, if you walk in obedience and do what I tell you to do, I'm going to take care of this, I'm going to provide. And so I would go to my mailbox and I would take out my bills, well, all of my mail, but most of them at that time were bills. And I'd look up and I'd say, okay, God, you've got mail. Mm. And then I'd take it home. I wouldn't even open them because in our country, it is a federal offense to open someone else's mail. <laughs> so I would take oh, them home. So I, would, it. <laughs> I would put them in a folder marked God's mail. And then when I'd get a little bit of money in, I'd say, okay, God, which one of your bills do you want me to pay for you today? And I really, I needed to frame it so I wasn't overwhelmed and God always came through. So this all started actually, um, your story uh, unfortunately is all too common. Uh, your husband, you had learned mm -hmm. in your marriage that he had a sexual addiction, yes. pornography. And then when your baby girl was two weeks old, he walked out. Yes, yes. And you know, the sexual addiction starts at pornography, but it went to him acting out on all kinds of things that put myself and my daughter in danger. And I found this out when I was six months pregnant. And then he told me that he was leaving. He actually told me five days before I delivered my daughter. Mm -hmm. He told me that he was leaving. I was shocked. And then when she was two weeks old, we separated. Mm -hmm. And God, there were so many overwhelming emotions. You know, I just had a baby. I'd never had a baby before. So newborn baby, all of the emotions, and then all of the financial struggles. And it was at that time that God really birthed this book. And during the time, you know, when we go through things, we'll have well-meaning friends that say, now if you just come on the other side, you're going to get to minister to folks. I did not want to hear that. Mm -hmm. But God spoke to me. I was sitting in my blue recliner. And God said, Danette, I'm going to teach you keys to come through these challenging financial times. And then I want you to teach my people. I had no idea that it was going to be through television and through books. Mm -hmm. But that's the, that's the plan. And God will use whatever the enemy means for evil, God will use for good. But you had to learn those keys first. I mean, I you had to come to a place where you were willing to say, okay, God, I do trust you. This is really the pits I'm in right now. Yes. Uh, but I do trust you and I am willing to listen to you and walk out these keys in my own life yes. and then teach them to others. And it was a process and it wasn't easy. I say that in my book, you know, it wasn't easy, but it is possible. You don't need easy, you just need possible. And God would begin to, you know, the first thing was obedience. And our obedience opens the door to so many blessings. And so he would say, okay, are you, you know, I want you to trust me. Like I wanted to go get a secular job. I'd been in ministry all of my adult life since I was 19, I started in the ministry. And so here I was going through a divorce and I was like, God, what am I gonna do? And the Lord says, keep doing what you're called to do. And so I took off a year. Um, I was going through a divorce. My husband was leaving, I had a newborn baby. I took off a year from the ministry and I just did what God would say. And he taught me, Anne, there's always someone hurting worse than you. Mm. And as poor as I was, because I was broke, and I would sit in the mid middle of my floor at night and I would cry and God said, Danette, this is temporary. He said, you're not always gonna be this broke and she's not always gonna be this little, but keep your eyes on me and your heart on the needs of my people. And he would show me how to get my eyes off of myself and go minister to someone else. Mm. I would go to the projects. And now today we have 10 adopted neighborhoods that we've adopted. 
we would go into subsidized housing. I would take what little food I had and I'd give it out to the moms that didn't know Jesus as their provider, didn't know the Lord was the father to the fatherless. And that started what is today our Bread of Life outreach program. Wow. Mm. <laughs> now I know there will be people watching right now, maybe single mothers watching right now that are, are connecting with your story and, mm -hmm. and they're seeing a spark of hope. Now, now you've um, written this book about these 15 keys. Uh, Number one, uh, maybe we won't have a chance to go through all, all of these 15, to get a copy. but, but if, yeah. we, if we just uh, pull out a, a few. Yeah. Um, number one is trust your provider, not your provision. Yes. See, we think we're trusting God as our provider until all of a sudden all sources of our provision are gone. And then we realize that our mm -hmm. trust was really in our source of provision, whether it's your check, whether it's your spouse, whether it's your savings. And, you know, we need to trust our provider. I thought I knew how to trust God because I've been in the ministry. I traveled as an evangelist starting at 21. But now it was a whole new level of mm -hmm. trusting God every day for diapers, for baby food, for my food, for toilet paper in the house. I share funny stories. They weren't too funny at the time. Mm -hmm. But the truth is I wanted people to laugh because if we laugh in the midst of our circumstances, the joy of the Lord really is your strength and the word really works. He's our provider. He's the source of our provide, mm -hmm. provision, no matter what source and no matter what change happens there. Mm -hmm. I think it was Mother Teresa who once said, you'll never truly know that Jesus is all you need until <laughs> Jesus is all you have. Mm -hmm. That's and right. And going through that difficult time, you truly felt that and your need for him. Now, another one of your points that I just really, really like, take the limits off of your thinking. Resist the spirits of lack and limitation. Oh, yeah. So often when you're right in the middle of it, you're sitting on your living room floor crying out to God, that's as big as your world is, right. is right there on that spot on the carpet. Right. But you're saying, no, push through those limitations. Right, and so many times our thoughts, we limit God. And we have to, God would say, Danette, you've got to take your limits off of your thinking because I would think, okay, well, this is how provision has always come in and this is how it has always come in. No, take the limits off. And God showed me that no one in the Bible got a miracle unless somebody was expecting. There's great power in your expectation. So you have to keep expecting. Mm -hmm. Now there's responsibility too. You have to live according to biblical principles and you can then stand on his promises. Mm -hmm. You know, whenever I would get money in my hand, I would say, God, what do you want me to do with this? And so many times when we're so limited in our finances, we'll take it and we're like, okay, well, I'm finally gonna go get this, what I needed, or I'm gonna go out to eat because I haven't, I've been eating tuna fish for three weeks. No, you've gotta ask God what to do with every single bit of the provision that comes into your hand. And then when you do that and you're walking in that obedience and keep your mind on the Word of God and keep expecting God to fulfill His promises. He will. And so then you, you say, expect Him to speak. Expect Him. So someone watching right now will say, so, okay, Danette, am I listening for an audible voice? Is God going to write something in the sky? Like, okay, I'm living according to the Bible. I'm asking for God to give me the provision. I'm willing to walk out His plan. But how do I hear Him? How do I hear from Him? Actually hearing, I always say hearing the voice of God is the easy part. It's doing it that's hard because it will kill your flesh. Mm. We hear the voice of God as we read the word. The word will just jump out at you and you'll be like, okay, I got it. The Holy Spirit will speak to you right here. Just, you'll just know, it, or it'll just come to your mind. Sometimes it's more loud and shaking, but a lot of times it's mm. the still small voice. And then it's your obedience to do what that still small voice said to do yeah. that opens you up to continually hearing the voice of God and continue to step it and walk it out. God always blesses obedience. Yes, That's he right. does. Yeah. Now, some people have heard teachings that, that would to them almost come across like saying, okay, you're, you're, you got a strong arm God into keeping his promises. You know, he said this, so you mm -hmm. got to do it. And he's obligated to, to do that. You know, uh, what would you say, say to someone that maybe are skewed in their thinking that way? 
God loves us so much. He wants to do it for us. You know, God was, I met God in a way, I, I've, I've known God since I was 17, but I got to know the Lord in a way that I had never known Him before. Mm. And you know, what I would say is just let God love on you and you love on God. And don't allow these things to be a stumbling block for you. I had to forgive. Mm. We, it, we've got to forgive if God is going to forgive us of our sin. I had to forgive. I had to release. I had to not look to people as my provider. I had to look to the Lord. And I had to love on God and let God love on me in His presence mm. like never before. And then that's when that peace comes in that He's going to do it. You know, in the book of Isaiah, God says, I will give you the treasures in darkness. Mm. Sometimes we have to walk through those dark places to get those treasures from God. And then that's what we take with us the rest of our lives and then eventually do share with mm -hmm. others as well. And you have certainly done that in your book. You give these uh, keys mm -hmm. or these principles for God's provision. God, You've Got Mail is the book. In fact, we have it on our e-store. Awesome. It's available uh, for anyone who would like to uh, call and, and purchase it online at crossroads.ca or you can go uh, uh, on the phone at 1-800-265-3100 and purchase your copy. Mm -hmm. But another phone number that we always love to give out is our prayer line because uh, Danette, I'm sure yes. there's someone watching as we said earlier who's going through what you went through and yes. they're just grasping for some hope. Thank You've God. given some sparks of hope today mm -hmm. but if you would like prayer, if you would like to talk with someone, uh, you mm -hmm. can give us a call 24-7 one 273 4444 We'd love to pray with you about what you're going through and believe God for a miracle yes. in your life as he did in yes. Danette's life yes, as well. For sure. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you for being with us, Danette. Well, thank you so much. It's great to have you. My pleasure. You.